So I will admit, I had only been in two to three other D&D games before, with the exact same group. About half the table liked me, and half didn't, but my character was never really liked in the games. They had played before, had in-jokes and history, so I was the odd guy out. I was playing a halfling thief. We had your typical fighter, barbarian, wizard, cleric, etc. We were investigating a town where there were strangely no kids whatsoever. Turns out the kids were disappearing and nobody knew where they were. Now I thought the solution was simple, but everyone was arguing on exploring the forest, setting up traps and forming a night watch to catch anyone who came back. I tried to butt in and explain in character. Um, you guys know I am basically kid sized, right? In fact, if you put me in the dress of one of the kids, it would be almost impossible to tell, especially at night. Well, a lot of the party thought this was such a dumb idea and would never work, but one of the cool guys in the group interjected. You know, that does sort of make sense, and we do need bait to lure it out. So after a long time, we had a plan. I was going to wander around at night and lure this kidnapper out, and they would be hiding in some bushes nearby and follow, in the hopes it would lead to the rest of the kids. And if it looked like I was in danger, the party would burst out and rain blows and saves me. That was the plan anyway. So I'm standing around doing my little damsel in distress thing and I'm suddenly abducted by this strange skinny man in a costume who boinks me on the head and I go limp. So he takes me into the forest and then to this strange little cottage. He sets me at the table where there's tons of little kids all there and a fat old grandma at one end. The jester goes around and bonks each kid in the head, including me, and I make a will save and pass. I ask a question like an innocent kid and the jester man looks at me with a curious look walks over and boinks me on the head again and I make a whiz save and pass. I then notice that other kids are just sitting there and not doing anything, so I assume the same zombie-like behaviour. The jester and old lady, a witch, engage in a conversation. Basically, they have been stealing the kids here and using them as servants and such, so we have the bad guys. Now, I am expecting my party to walk in with a plate of cookies and Chris Hansen, but what happened was, Somehow the party had made such terrible rules that they had lost me and I'd gotten lost in the forest. Which is funny, because these people usually pull off this kind of stuff easily. So there I am, sitting, waiting for backup in a very bad spot. Because, well, I'm in costume and you can't really hide a bow and arrow or short sword without blowing cover. The DM at this point is loving this. So the witch apparently is hungry, so DM rolls. And it's not me telling the kids across from me on the table to climb up and lay down, then ordering all the kids to pick up their forks and form a line. Warning, if you're screamish, time to leave. So each kid walks up, takes a chunk out of the kid on the table, and walks and puts the bite on the witch's mouth. I'm running many scenarios in my head as I get closer in line. I can't fight a witch, who was obviously supposed to be the boss encounter, solo, and certainly not with a jester sidekick, and of course the zombie kids in a trance, who are likely to take those forks to me. I can't talk or anything, so I can't talk my way out of this. I can't fight my way out. I'm a thief. My character would be scared and play along to save her life until A, a party shows up, or B, there's an opening to escape. This is what is important to know. I don't roll good in this game. It's kind of why my character always ends up as the one being a joke. So I walk up to the kid, now dead. He asks, so what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take my fork, get some food and go feed it to the witch like the other kids. The DM looks surprised, no doubt assuming I was going to try and pull something. He tells me to roll whiz because I'm doing something really disgusting and possibly evil. I roll, natural 20. I go up and feed that witch a bite and get back in line. DM thinks to himself, okay that was a fluke. So the kids go and file again, back to me. So what are you going to do now? Feed the witch? Huh? Make a whiz check. Roll 15. I pass. He looks both surprised that I have managed to pass every wisdom check so far and that this didn't work. So he makes the line go again and I roll again. I'm not going to fight them. Roll 18. Pass. Uh, well you're going to have to take a penalty to your alignment after this. At this point he says the girl had been completely eaten now. The witch turns to the jester and asks if he's hungry and with a smile the DM rolls and he loses the smile and the jester is not hungry. Well, I'm still a tad peckish. I think I'll just have one more, the witch says. At this point, I understand what the DM's trying to do. So instead of having a chance of being the kid eaten and having to do three more challenging whiz checks, I do the only thing I can think of. I have my character stand up and announce, I have to go to the bathroom. 
and run past both them and out the front door. <laughs> now, as a halfling, I take penalty for running. And this jester guy has 60 feet movement per turn. Basically, he cuts me off and finally gets me and beats my head with his cane till I feel a wisdom save. And that was basically the end of the session for that night. Frankly, I was proud of my epic rolls and sort of being forced into a corner by the DM and my party's incompetence, especially after they had given me such a hard time before. Well, finals in college came and I was too busy to go back and finish the campaign. But I heard from the cool guy that basically they finally managed to find that one house in the forest eventually the next day. And they saw the jester. When they went into the house, they were ambushed by all the kids and the witch. However, a halfling thief came from the shadows and started backstabbing people. Several players died and the campaign was rather derailed by having almost half the party killed. Which is saying something, since we had an eight-person party. Reminiscing about an old 3.5 campaign. Standard green text format won't exactly work for this story, but I'll try. Be me, half-orc barbarian. Be not me, tiefling cleric, human scout, human sorcerer, human paladin, furry rogue. Furry rogue? No. <laughs> Making our way downtown. Well, I'll get this. <laughs> Making our way through dungeon. Beats boss and roll for loot. Rolls 100. DM pulls up his last rare magical items. Rolls again. DM starts laughing maniacally. Oh no, dot JPG. DM says we find an unusual and dingy looking staff, but is seething with magical energy. Sorcerer succeeds knowledge arcana check. The DM tells us that this is a fable artifact known as the Staff of Alteron the Mad. Creation of the DM's own make, of course. Using it is said to cause any number of hundreds, possibly thousands, of random magical effects, and that only the brave or foolish would dare to hold on to it. I forget who takes it, but shenanigans ensue. Anytime it is casted, DM literally has a table they made with hundreds of possible effects slash outcomes. Various effects that occurred across the campaign included our paladin's hair temporarily turning vibrant colours, our scout periodically sneezing out gold for several hours, my barbarian being temporarily turned into a large humanoid rabbit, and various other silly and relevant harmless effects. One such case where someone was fucking around with a staff, the DM rolls, then starts laughing maniacally again. DM says we have summoned Alteron's personal familiar when he was still alive. Chuckles the Rainbow Kobold. Chuckles is a small kobold with constantly shifting rainbow colored scales. He has no specialties or skills, has an intelligence so low that he is barely considered sentient, and his only possession is his own miniature version of the staff of Alteron the Mad, with its own table of effects. We soon discover that if Chuckles ever dies, he explodes into rainbow confetti, and reappears in 1d4 rounds. Start using him to test for traps and dungeons. In battle, Chuckles rarely listens to orders. He uses his actions to run up the nearest enemy and smack them with a staff. Chuckles proceeds to help us out multiple times in battle via RNG. Some events including banishing a medium air elemental that an enemy had literally just summoned, casting point blank fireball into a group of enemies, paralyzing a dangerous enemy, and likely more I'm forgetting. DM starts to realize this may have been a mistake. The last straw came when we were ambushed mid-rest by a mini boss and his cronies. We're taking out the ads and Chuckle runs up to the leader and smacks him with his staff. DM rolls, DM face palms. The threatening mini boss is bayful polymorphed into a shark. Suffocates in air and dies. Most of the cronies flee in terror. We eat shark for dinner. Needless to say, Chuckles and the staff of Alter on the Mad mysteriously disappeared sometime later. We will always remember you, Chuckles. You stupid little encounter ruiner. So I don't know about you guys, but that staff of Alt on the Mad has to be a knockoff of Shagor's Wabajak. Just saying. You know, it's pretty obvious, but, you know, I, 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 I kind of feel like, you know, the comments will be f spammed full of it. But, look, I'm a big fan when it comes to any form of, like, random spell effect. Um, I love stories with random spell effect. Um, I love orange. Okay, th this is a weird one. I don't love RNG. I hate RNG in almost any game I've came across. But in tabletop games, I don't mind RNG. And that's a really weird concept because, like, you know, like, I don't blame anyone for despising RNG because, like, you know, it's kind of 
it's kind of bullshit, you know, a lot of the time, like, you know, the random chance of getting something good, getting something shit, you know, you never know. Um, but, like, I don't know, maybe this is a discussion for another time <laughs> before I start going into the ins and outs of RNG. Oh, God. But, look, as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know what you think down below, and I'll see you in the next video.